All right, I'm making a shadow box for my uh, daughter-in-law who, um, you know, wants to put some of her keepsakes from her wedding in a shadow box. And um, at the wedding, uh, I made a uh, sort of an octagonal arch for them. Um, to stand behind them during their vows and whatnot. And uh, so these are, these pieces here are actual cutoffs um, from that project. And so I'm using those to, to back the shadow box. So I went and I jointed all the edges and, um, you know, glued them together. And this will just be the backing, which will, you know, get, um, uh, get the you know flowers and invitation and whatnot just glued to it with like hot glue and then i'm gonna make a a frame out of uh this quarter song white oak that is um the same material uh, probably from the same batch but i know you know i know these are from the same batch because of course this is the cut off from the you know the octagonal corner and uh you know so uh the the white oak is you know, probably the same stuff. It's I know I only bought it from uh, my supplier once, so certainly it came from the same batch of lumber, but maybe it wasn't the exact same lumber. But anyhow, I'm going to make a frame that goes around it um, that will, you know, create the box. Um, of course, it'll be, you know, way, way shallower than this. Um, I expect to be able to get both, both sides and, um, you know, well, all four sides out of um, two of these pieces, and then I'm going to face it with a, you know, sort of like a picture frame, um, and my intent is to make it like a box that, um, you know, has a friction fit lid, and um, make the frame just friction fit on the front and put some magnets, uh, some high-powered magnets in it to hold the front on. All right, the shadow box is coming together. Um, you can see that uh, panel that I made. I've, you know, kind of evened it out and smoothed it up and all that. So it's pretty nice in terms of uh, the backing. It's mostly going to be covered anyhow, I think, by by the stuff she puts in here. But um, anyhow, so um, it's just a, a little shallow box, um, you know, that I've mitered at the corners and I'll spline the corners. And then I've made this frame that goes on the front. And that frame will, um, you know, it's just like a picture frame, right? So it's uh, got a channel in it that'll receive some glass or some plexiglass. And, uh, you know, I put a little, um, you know, detail on the end. So, you know, you can it's round it over on the top and then chamfer it on the opposite, uh, on the back side and on the, you know, side that receives the glass. Um... And then, uh, you know, once I get it all cleaned up, sanded, and, um, you know, get some stain on it and a little finish on it, um, I will embed some magnets in the frame, and then I'm probably just going to put some dowels or something in the corners so that they ride, you know, they ride into the corners, um, and then the magnets will just hold the front on. At least that's the plan. Okay, we're coming along on the shadow box. Um, I think the last time that I recorded it, it was unfinished and um, the uh, it was unglued, you know. So it was basically just um, being held together with a um, a band. Um, and so, you know, since then, what I've done is, of course, done all the finished sanding and everything. But the um, these corners in this frame are held together with biscuits inside the the joint um so you know you can't see the uh the main thing that's providing strength and grain to end grain of course is not very strong so having those biscuits in there will make it a very strong um, uh, case um, and this will receive a piece of plexiglass so you know you, you want it to i don't think she's going to open it and close it a lot but um, you do want it to be strong enough to to hold up to that if um if she does want to change things out in it. Um, I stained the the back before putting together the uh, the frame around it. Um, 
and I also put a couple of coats of wipe on poly just so that there isn't you know a line on this interior um, edge um, you know of uh, you know say lighter than the stained color because um, it is a floating back and um, it'll move around a little bit in that um, slot so um, the uh, these corners are too small for biscuits so um, you know and, and of course being that small they're gonna be uh, very tough to add strength to um, you know internally so I've gone ahead and put in splines and um, usually when I do splines I'd use an offsetting um, wood like you know I would use walnut or you know something like that but these I just use the the same wood the, the uh, quarter saw and white oak um, and that'll add a ton of strength to those corners and make it a very sturdy case um, so um, of course I've finished it um, and it's um, finished with a satin uh, helmsman um, polyurethane spar varnish so it's a you know pretty pretty stout finish um, and uh, ultimately I'm gonna put a piano hinge at the top and a couple magnets along the bottom edge um, to hold it closed and um, and then uh, put a piece of plexiglass um, you know in inside this uh, you know channel inside the frame um, uh, to you know seal it all up and uh, I think that's the next uh, video we'll have is just the the uh, the finished version of it but um, you know I think it's turning out pretty nice it's um, kind of bigger than a traditional you know shadow box is almost the size of a small medicine cabinet I think but uh, uh, very shallow uh, small medicine cabinet but um, but it'll it meets her um, requirements for for size for her wedding paraphernalia and I think it'll end up being a really nice um, nice thing to hang on your wall this is the back side of the uh, shadow box and um, basically the way it's going to hang is with a French cleat so you can see that's this is the top actually of the shadow box so um, this is the bottom part of the French cleat um, and uh, basically the way the French cleat works is that this is cut at a 45 and this is cut at a 45 and you hang this on the wall like that see the wall side um, and so it hangs on the wall like that. You just level that out. And then this just comes and sneaks right up underneath the other 45 degree angle. And you got a nice secure way to hang that that's nice and level. And then um, for a hinge, um, I ended up using a piano hinge, an oversized piano hinge. Because my frame is about a half an inch proud of the, the box itself. And so I got an oversized hinge, um, and it hangs out over the top a little ways. Um, it's not going to be open and closed a lot, so I don't really worry about it, you know, pulling the screws out at some point, you know, from overuse or whatever. But um, anyhow, so it's um, it overhangs a little bit um, so that... Um, when you open it, you can see I got a little ledge in here on the inside, so it doesn't, you know, you don't see the hinge on the inside. And then um, it just leaves a little gap between that overhang, so you can lay it flat when you open the hinge. And then here I'm just going to put in uh, a couple screws with some washers. I'm going to inset those and then put a couple of neodymium magnets uh, in the top section here and so that'll just hold it closed um, and then I'm just going to put a piece of plexiglass on the front okay it's all finished um, it's got some plexiglass on the lid um, got a couple of neodymium magnets in here a couple of screws for it to magnetized too. It's not super strong, so just enough to keep it closed. Um, 
but uh, that's the finished product.